Okay, are we, we are ready? Do I just go? Okay, great. <laughs> well, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, good to be here. Uh, nice to see so many people. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Uh, my name is Morten. I work from Brago uh, on the Cloud Platform team, Hardcore team, do a little bit of both. Uh, been here for a long time. But enough about me. Uh, we are here to talk about uh, Headless and Hardcore. So uh, what I will go through today is a uh, little bit about uh, our guiding principles for when we develop uh, Umbrago Hardcore, a uh, little bit about new and coming features in relation to these uh, guiding principles, uh, have a bit of demos. Luckily, I have a bit more than what Philip showed. Otherwise, I would be totally out of content because he announced everything. Uh, but what he showed with custom editors, I actually have a demo of that so you can see it. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the future of uh, Headless and Umbrago. So not specific to Hardcore, but related to Hardcore, but definitely Headless. <clears throat> so in terms of uh, guiding principles, you could ask why, why guiding principles, why have that? Um, for the Hardcore team, we actually, it's been a part of what we've been doing in the platform team for, for a long time. But the beginning of this year, uh, we established a dedicated product team to deal with Hardcore and to do all of the development around Umbrago Hardcore. And when we started with this team uh, in January, uh, we had a few new people join the team. Um, and when we started, we were faced with a, a few challenges around how we do caching in, uh, in Hardcore and the platform for the APIs. So that made us uh, uh, have a conversation about what's our aspirations for Hardcore what are we aiming for? What is it that we want to achieve with Hardcore? And what is it that we want to, to focus on? Um, so we, we decided on, on three principles which will help us in, in regards to when we do development, when we look at work that we uh, prioritize for our sprints, for our development cycles, uh, which parts is it that we want to focus on, uh, and also in terms of where we want to see Hardcore go in the future. So first part is uh, we want it to be fast. So you could say if, uh, if you were to uh, go to a taco stand, for example, and, and order a taco, you'd want that to be pretty fast if you're hungry and craving tacos. Uh, then we want it to be flexible. If you are, again, ordering tacos, uh, you'd want some options, right? If you only have one taco to choose from, uh, that's a little bit sad. Uh, you could say for hardcore, you only have the built-in property editors. That's a little bit sad as well. Then uh, stable, when we uh, develop a managed service, we want it to be stable as well. So we can't have you, uh, like if you're craving tacos, show up to a taco stand and it's closed. Uh, that doesn't really work for a managed service. So, uh, so these are the three guiding principles that we've decided on. Um, and yeah, you, you might have, if you're paying attention, you might have noticed one thing uh, around uh, what then becomes the three letter acronym uh, for fast, flexible, and stable. Uh, yeah, that's uh, a, a bit awkward. Uh, so getting uh, a good three-letter acronym uh, can be difficult. I promise you this was not intentional. Uh, we saw this afterwards that we had the words going, uh, and then you can't help but notice the abbreviation. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's not intentional. Uh, but the good thing is that if we don't live up to these uh, guiding principles at any point, we can bang the table and say, FFS, not going to curse on stage. <clears throat> but uh, at the end of the day, uh, the thing is that we want hardcore to be fast, flexible, and stable. So uh, what does it actually mean for what we've been doing over the past uh, six months and, and what we'll be doing over the next years? So if we dive in and, and look at what it means to be fast, uh, performance, when you have a managed service that provides API, it has to be performant, right? You would expect nothing less of a managed service that it's, it's fast uh, and performant. Um, and especially from, from our perspective, when, when our customers and when our partners are deciding on a headless offering to use, we don't want performance to be the reason why you don't choose hardcore. So performance is something that we treat as a feature uh, and something that we continue to work on going forward. In terms of scale, our focus right now is on, on the EU uh, and then also on, on the US when uh, the region opens up uh, after summer. And then the intention is really to have a really good performance globally as well. 
so that it's not constrained to specific regions, but wherever you are in the world, you should get good performance out of the hardcore APIs. Over the past six months, we've done a huge chunk of uh, performance updates. Uh, we've re reworked our caching strategy, worked with Cloudflare in terms of how we can improve, strategy, uh, improve caching so that uh, edge cache lives as long as possible, so that you are generally retrieving content from uh, a cache, a persistent cache, that's updated whenever you save and publish uh, content in the back office or when you update the schema. Uh, and we continue to work with Cloudflare on, on improving this and are looking at updates coming up over the next six months to improve it even more. In terms of uh, flexibility, uh, over the, the past couple of months, we've added some additional property editors. Uh, so with Hardcore, when we started out, uh, we only had the property editors that you get with Umbrago uh, out of the box. Uh, we know that uh, for everyone who's familiar with Umbrago, that you're used to being able to create your own property editors, uh, which we didn't have in Hardcore. So we've uh, started out by adding a few more um, so that you have a bit more options. Uh, like providing a Google Maps uh, editor uh, where you can select um, stuff from a map uh, and then get it through the API, both REST and, and GraphQL. And then we added, as Philip mentioned during the keynote, we added contentment to Hardcore so that we are able to uh, give you the option of, of pulling in data from the outside, uh, from JSON or XML or I think even CSV. Um, then another thing in terms of flexibility, uh, we are going to build our version three of our REST API, which is going to be based off of, uh, or based around the Open API uh, standard. Then, in terms of uh, the custom grid editors that uh, that Philip also mentioned this morning, uh, I just wanted to dive a, a bit deeper into that uh, and show you a little bit about uh, how that actually works in the back office. So, the work that's being done right now is uh, done in collaboration with one of our customers. Uh, who are actively using the, uh, the grid in the back office. Um, and being able to create custom grid editors is a must for them uh, because they want to tailor the, the editor experience uh, to what they are working with, with, which makes a lot of sense. But how can we do this uh, in a good way when, you don't, when you're not able to deploy custom code into a hardcore solution? Uh, so we're doing this using uh, JavaScript, web components, lid elements, so all of the same technologies that's going to be used for the new back office, we're going to be using in hardcore as well and allow you to you create uh, custom grid editors to start with and then eventually property editors as well uh, using this. Um, so let me just show you in the back office what that looks like. So um, we go to the settings section, you'll see on the templating that we have a new section called uh, grid editors. Uh, where we are able to create uh, editors specifically for the grid. Uh, you have uh, an editor in the back office, which is based on uh, VS Code, uh, where you can type in your web components all using uh, JavaScript. And here we have uh, a basic uh, headline and uh, a quote. Uh, so just text fields uh, using web components. And then uh, yeah, you can see that it's added to uh, the grid. Here we have the grid. It's uh, the same grid as from Umbrago, but it's uh, adjusted to work with these uh, custom grid editors uh, built using web components. Some from the uh, from the content perspective, uh, similar grid experience. Uh, you're able to create the layouts that you want, and then use the editors uh, which you've created through the back office. So. Yeah, just entering a title, headline, a quote, and then uh, save and publish that. So I see I should type faster when I record demos, I can see. Save and publish. Boom, there we go. Grab the uh, uh, ID for, of the content so we can look it up uh, using the REST API. So going to settings, going to the API browser, uh, we can then uh, retrieve that uh, content item using the REST API. And scrolling down, you can see the output is, is what you'd expect from the grid, uh, that it has the, the columns and, and so forth. So then uh, in terms of uh, integration with Umbrago, 
Let me see. Let me just. Uh, yeah. So one thing is, of course, uh, just doing text. That's easy. Uh, but some of the th more interesting things is being able to work with other parts of Umbrago. So like being able to pick media, being able to pick content, and then how do we actually do that and work with that from, from a custom grid editor, which is built entirely in web components uh, using uh, JavaScript. So here in this example, we are actually integrating with Umbrago to be able to use a media picker in our custom grid editor. So here you can see the preview. If you go to content um, and then create a content item with a layout, <laughs> should speed it up. <laughs> type faster, more than type faster. Yeah. Uh, so we create a content item. And then we can use uh, the media picker. And then you can see when I click uh, to select media, it's uh, opening up uh, to select from the, uh, from the media library. So the kind of experience that you would expect from Umbrago. Uh, and again, this is all built using web components. It's using the Umbrago UI library. It's using lit elements. And it's using uh, what we call uh, a bridge between web components and Angular but uh, more on that uh, in a little bit. So here, <clears throat> you can see um, uh, grabbing the ID again. And was that the yeah, API browser? Look it up. So we can see the output of, uh, of that uh, selected media. And here you can see that it has the UDI, so the reference to the media item that was selected. Um, and that's where the next part comes in. Uh, if I can click Next. Here we go. Um, so what we have here is a JSON schema, which allows us to define how that value is stored and how it's transformed uh, for the API. So here you can see we had a reference to the media item. It's uh, what we call a UI reference. Uh, it's uh, an Obrago ID, uh, which is structured like a UI. Um, that's not really giving us a lot when it comes out through the API. So we want to transform that to the actual URL um, of that media item so uh, we can use it in our API. So we are doing that using JSON schema. So you can see here when I then uh, retrieve uh, the same content item uh, using uh, a custom media picker that I now have the URL instead of the, uh, instead of the, the UDI. So transforming it using JSON schema. So what I mentioned before about bridging uh, Umbrago and the Angular API uh, in order to, to use web components to build out custom editors, uh, we are creating an open source project uh, which is live now, so you can go on GitHub and check it out. Um, if you want to learn more about it, then I would suggest grabbing a hold of uh, Rasmus in the Cloud Corner, because he's the mastermind behind this. Uh, but basically, it's, it's a really good way for us to be able to provide a solution where we don't, uh, or the editors that you create for, uh, for Hardcore and use in Hardcore, they won't break regardless of what happens to Umbrago. Uh, when the new back office is introduced, this will continue to work um, and will continue to work uh, regardless of the grid being removed or whatever happens, it will continue to work. So uh, a really nice addition, and we think that's something that might be interesting to, uh, to package developers as well. Uh, so if you're a package developer and think this is interesting, come talk to us in the Cloud Corner. <coughs> then going back to, uh, to the guiding principles, about being stable as a managed service. Super important to have a stable API that you can count on always being up, always being reliable. Um, and what we want to do with Hardcore is to provide, really be open about what you can expect in terms of performance and reliability. Uh, so one of the things that we're going to work on in the near future is pushing this into our status page. So uh, you might not know that we have a status page, but we have one for uh, Umbrago Cloud where we show uh, things about scheduled maintenance, uh, show stuff about 
uh, if something should be degraded, have degraded performance and so forth. Uh, this is also a place where we can put performance targets so that we can put uh, what you expect in terms of performance from the, the REST API and the GraphQL API and what you can expect in, in terms of uptime and really showing that and being transparent about it because we believe that we can provide a service that is stable and reliable always. <clears throat> okay, so switching gears a little bit uh, and talking about Headless and Umbrago, so not specifically to hardcore, but more in, in general terms. So the future, uh, Tago for all, no, maybe not Tago's, but uh, where we at is we really don't want to be putting anyone behind the fence and seeing that there's these headless features in hardcore, but you can't use them because you have to run on premise or uh, you run in a setup that can't run in cloud for whatever reason. Um, so we want to be able to provide headless features to all uh, and provide that in the core product, so in the core of Umbrago, the open source version. So uh, what you can expect to see, oops, that was too fast, um, is alignment between uh, a lot of the teams at Umbrago. Uh, so we are collaborating between the hardcore team, uh, the core team, and the new back office team, uh, and looking at where we can uh, collaborate so that we get a, a more of a unified solution. Uh, one part is, of course, uh, the open API that we're going to build for hardcore uh, is what will be pushed back into uh, the open source version of, of Umbrago as well. But uh, I think the really, the big part that you will notice and see in the future uh, around alignment is around JSON schema, because we believe that this is something where we can make everything come together in terms of how it works, how we can provide a solution uh, that's the same in terms of APIs, whether you're using just open source version of Umbrago, or if you're using hardcore, uh, or if you're pushing your sites to cloud. Uh, so having JSON schema to define what the APIs will look like um, is, is what we believe will, will be the, the guiding principle for this. So as I mentioned, the REST API will be the same in, uh, in the core of Umbrago as we have in hardcore. And uh, the same goes for, for management APIs. So when, uh, when the back office team is building the new back office, they're going to need new APIs for, for doing whatever they need to do. To, uh, to interact with Umbrago and the, uh, the models and so forth uh, from the back office. In hardcore, we need to be able to do a similar thing uh, because for us, it's not only about the read-only APIs, uh, it's very much also about being able to create content uh, and media through APIs. And for that, we're going to need new management APIs. And we're going to base this around uh, open API as well. Um, and the idea being that, that what we use and what will be used by the back office will be the same thing. So a lot more uh, consolidation around the APIs and being the same, um, whatever you're doing. So right now, this is uh, what the target looks like. Uh, and these are, again, still target releases. But we are currently aiming for pushing the REST API uh, to the core of Umbrago as part of version 12. Then for uh, webhooks and the management APIs, it's currently targeted for version 13. That's the version where the new back office uh, is dropping. So, um, so that will be part of that as well. And we are going to, to collaborate between teams around all of this because we, may, we think that it makes a lot of sense that you're able to use a, a REST API regardless of you using the open source version of Umbrago, whether you're using Umbrago Cloud or if you're using Hardcore. And the fact that you're able to move between them and use the same API, uh, we just think that makes a lot of sense uh, to be able to do. And we believe that we can provide a managed service for our APIs, uh, which makes it a valuable offering for you as well. So if you, when you need to go live, if you need to scale, you can have uh, the REST API as an add-on option to your cloud site or to your whatever site uh, and just use that and don't really think about scaling. And again, for, this is also something that opens up the possibilities for us to be able to provide GraphQL beyond ju uh, just the uh, hardcore. So imagine that you're running on Umbrago Cloud. Uh, you have your custom property editors. All of it's defined using JSON schema. And when you publish that, when you push it to cloud, 
you could add a GraphQL API on top of that, because with the JSON schema, we can use that to generate the GraphQL types. So that we are able to add all of these things. And again, you're able to move between it, so depending on what makes sense uh, for your project. <clears throat> and I think that's, that was it for that part. Um, so another thing um, that we've been talking about for a little while is that we are going to establish a headless community team, uh, similar to what the CMS has just done for the CMS. Um, and this community team is, uh, I guess, the same type of uh, approach to a community team, where it'll be more of an advisory board, where we meet uh, around four times a year to discuss what's moving on the headless front. And this is something that will not be specific to hardcore. It will, of course, include hardcore, but it will also talk about headless in general and talk about the direction that we're going with uh, headless and Umbrago, the open source version as well. So if this is something that interests you, uh, I would uh, uh, encourage you all to keep an eye on the Umbrago blog, where we will publi publish the, um, the applications for this community team. Uh, but the principles are a lot of the same as, as you've seen uh, with the open source CMS community team. And again, the idea is to meet uh, four times a year uh, to talk about Headless and, and the roadmap uh, and really be the voice of the community and partners and customers in regards to what's going to happen. So if this is of interest, I would highly recommend keeping an eye on, on that. So in, uh, in wrapping up, um, what we've seen in terms of hardcore, um, big focus on performance, big, perform big focus on platform stability, uh, something that's coming very soon, uh, two-factor authentication. As Philip also mentioned in the keynote, that's something that's coming to hardcore as well. So when you log into the back office, uh, that you can ensure that uh, People, the people who log in have two-factor authentication uh, enabled in order to log in. And for custom grid editors, the grid editors is where we start. Uh, that's a, a good place for us to start because the boundaries of, of what's possible with grid editors is a bit uh, smaller than if we were to do like anything, custom editors. You can create anything, right? So, so that's the next step for us. Um, but we believe that the custom grid editors will be a good first step uh, and that's something that we are hoping to push out relatively soon, and then the custom uh, property us towards the end of the year. And then I mentioned the target releases for, for the REST API in Umbrago, uh, for getting webhooks into the open source version, um, and focusing on, on JSON schema. Uh, and again, come and meet us in the cloud corner if you have input on this. Post your questions if you have something that's that you'd like to hear more about, not now, Jeroen, but uh, you can post it in the app. <laughs> and then uh, I think we have a, a Ask the Speaker session coming up afterwards. Uh, and then, again, I would just like to emphasize that uh, you will, over the, the coming years, see a lot more alignment between the teams in terms of what's happening so that everyone benefits from the work that's being done. And with that, I say thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Morton.